Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Biology Made Easy. So uh, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic which is blood pressure. You must have commonly heard people talking about it. I have this blood pressure issue. I have low blood pressure issue. So what exactly is blood pressure? Do we really understand the meaning of blood pressure? It is a generalized term that we use to certainly refer to a condition which is high, high blood pressure or low blood pressure, but it's the condition of the body. What exactly blood pressure means? We're going to learn today in this video. Okay, so let's start with it. What exactly uh, blood pressure means? To understand that, uh, first we will learn what are the vessels, blood vessels. So when I say blood vessels, these are like your pipes. Okay, your veins, arteries and capillaries are like pipes. So through these pipes, your blood flows through it. Okay, so if you imagine a pipe which doesn't have a rigidity, okay, which flattens when there is no pressure inside. Okay. Your arteries are like those pipes, the soft pipes which flatten when the blood doesn't flow through. So what exactly blood pressure means is blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the flowing blood. So when the water flows through the pipe, there's a pressure that exerts on the walls of the pipe and the pipe takes its original shape. Okay. Similarly, your blood, when it flows through the arteries or veins, it exerts a certain pressure on the walls of the arteries or vessels which is called as blood pressure. Usually we consider your arteries because what happens is the arteries are the ones that are carrying your oxygenated blood away from the heart. So your uh, left side of the heart pumps out the blood through the arteries. Okay. So there is a lot of pressure present in the arteries wherein, wherein when it comes to veins, veins are uh, have a little lesser pressure the pressure is not usually recorded using veins because it has come a long way from the pumping it's reaching back the heart so if you imagine that it has come a long way it's too far for uh, us to understand blood pressure so we usually take arteries as a standard to understand blood pressure okay now there are two types of blood pressures so it is usually uh, reported in two ways uh, it's systolic pressure and diastolic pressure when I say systolic pressure, in the previous lectures you must have gotten to know by now that systole means contraction. So when a heart is contracting, that state when the blood is ejected out immediately is systole, okay, is systolic pressure. So the pressure exerted by that particular blood which has been just pumped out is systolic pressure and it is usually the higher limit because a lot of pressure is being generated due to the ejection and is about 120 mm hg okay this mm hg is the unit of pressure that we use to determine the blood pressure this is the higher limit and it's the systolic pressure okay now what is diastolic pressure immediately after systole follows diastole the relaxation so during relaxation what happens the pressure drops okay there's a certain drop in the pressure and the lower limit of that particular pressure is called as diastolic pressure which is about 80 mm hg okay so this 80 mm hg and 120 mm hg the higher limit and the lower limit are considered to be the normal blood pressure of a human body okay this is usually present uh, uh, when you're working or your day-to-day -day life when you're healthy the usual blood pressure is this however it's a range it's just not considered to be 120 by 80 that's the perfect one that's the usual one that we get however plus minus 5 is still comes within the range okay of the normal now everybody knows about this instrument yeah that they use in the hospitals they put up a thing uh, around your arm and then they pump it and then they record the blood pressure what is that instrument called so this is very interesting fact to remember that instrument is called a oh, complicated name, so I'll write it down. Sphygmo manometer. Okay, so this manometer is a is actually an instrument even used by physicists to record the pressure. So when you are recording the blood pressure, you call it sphygmo manometer. Okay, so next time if you see that instrument that will click your mind it's called sphygmo manometer okay now we'll understand in detail 
about blood vessels okay a uh, few generalized statements that i'm going to give it's usually uh, this way that the arteries are the ones that carry oxygenated blood from heart to the different part of the body okay it's usually like that however for ca in case of pulmonary artery it's the other way around as i've already mentioned you can check out my cardiovascular system video which is which talks about the anatomy of heart you will get to know in detail uh veins carry deoxygenated blood okay uh from the different parts of the body veins collect the blood and reach the, to the heart where it goes to the lungs gets oxygenated and come back to the heart where again it's pumped out through arteries to different parts of the body this is how the cycle works now there are some capillaries okay capillaries are very minute pipes it's like you have to imagine like a straw thing guys so, so you see the arteries they have small they narrow down to something called arterioles and venules now these narrow down thing also attaches to capillaries which are like straws and these straws are inserted in your organs and that's how your organs receive proper amount of nutrients through blood because the main function of blood is to supply nutrients and to supply oxygen to the different parts of the body okay so in detail let's something let's study the structure okay this is very important for from a biology student point of view that you have to remember the structure of these vessels here we are learning uh, the structure of the arteries veins and capillaries okay so the outermost layer in both arteries and veins is called as tunica externa okay and it's similar in structure when it comes to veins and arteries it's called tunica externa okay so uh let's name it here t externa you guys can make notes if you want to because this will help you to remember the structure easily then within this tunica externa lies the second layer which is your tunica media okay now here comes the difference between arteries and veins now veins have a larger lumen have a larger lumen which means the blood is flowing in a larger cross sectional area okay that is why the pressure is also reduced okay and why is this done so the reason being it's very it's way away from the heart so it doesn't really exert so much of pressure on the walls whereas in arteries the tunica media layer is slightly thicker okay so here i'm drawing tunica media and this one here is tunica media of the vein the innermost layer for both of these are going to be tunica interna I'm just drawing a rough diagram so that you get an idea of how exactly the vessels look like from inside okay then you have okay now let's understand let me name it first because we don't need to get confused this was this is the layer okay this is the entire thing is made up of smooth muscles and in addition there is elastic fibers present in the artery there is elastic fibers the reason being because the pressure is being exerted the arteries tend to you know spread them a little bit and come back to its original position position this elasticity is very much needed or else the arteries are going to burst because of the pressure now this was tunica media and then uh, you have tunica intima this is also called as tunica intima or externa or uh, sorry interna
this part the hollow part of the vessels are called as lumen so arteries having smaller lumen lumen veins are having larger lumen okay now let's talk about capillaries capillaries are very easy uh, to remember very easy structure one millimeter uh, i think one cell thick layer they have okay so they are just one cell thick layers and the role is just it acts as the final supplier to the organs so it's actually organs are very much entangled with the uh, capillaries so what happens capillaries have these uh, gaps okay so through the gaps the capillaries tend to release the hormones and the nutrients required to the organs also through these gaps the exchange of excretants takes place when i say excretants it means the waste product that needs to be carried away uh, through your urinary system okay is taken inside because of these capillaries as the capillaries have one cell mem one cell thick membrane these membranes might have some gaps in between through these gaps only the exchanges take place something like this okay okay i think guys uh, for a better understanding let's uh, simplify it more it's too complicated like whatever i spoke in the language let us now imagine okay your arteries your veins and your capillaries are nothing but pipes as i told you in the beginning pipes situated in your body okay now if we have to imagine there is one pipe which is uh, which doesn't have that much of which is very elastic doesn't have that much of rigidity has a smaller lumen so when the water flows through in that pipe okay that's your artery it reaches a straw like structure now imagine how will you connect this straw and the pipe you have to connect them so you will use a connector right a connector that will reduce the size of the pipe and drain that into the straw so this connector particularly here in case of artery it's called arteriole okay what is the term that i used arteriole so artery here uh, sorry i think this is not working let me check some other one okay so this artery is going to connect to arteriole which further will connect to capillaries okay this capillaries again will connect to a connector like uh, that connector will be connecting your vein so that connector is called venule and venule ultimately connect to veins okay now how it looks like is something like this so suppose this is your artery your artery getting narrowed down or having a connector this is your arteriole and this is your capillary system capillary is usually entangled around the different organs okay and this system then connects to venule venule is another connector that will connect your vein vein with a larger lumen vein is with a larger lumen so that's how the connections take place as you can imagine the pipes it will be very easy for you to understand okay now uh, let us know what do you mean by pulse okay so as i mentioned usually we are dependent on the arteries and arteries uh, also another fact we need to remember arteries are deep situated in your body okay you cannot see the arteries all you can see is your veins veins are present just below your skin and arteries are deep situated in the muscles now uh, what is pulse so i told you that uh, the pressure a higher pressure is followed by the lower pressure so the, the difference between this pressure generates the pulse that you can read using the using the radial artery of the wrist okay so uh, the doctors usually you must have seen that they read pulse something like this and usually the pulse is recorded for about a minute 
because uh, about a minute it has to be somewhere around 72 72 beats per minute because that's how your systole and diastole takes place so you can always refer to my previous video to understand why are we considering as 72 beats per minute as normal i've already explained to you that 0.8 seconds is the time taken by one cardiac cycle when multiplied by 60 you get around 72 beats per minute okay now let us look into the factors that affect your blood pressure or how your blood pressure is usually up and down during the day or throughout the daytime okay or throughout your activities exercise when you are exercising when you are doing vigorous exercise your blood pressure goes high that's why it is always suggested that the exercise also needs to be done in limited amount also your emotions and excitement okay emotions and excitement play a very important role because when you are angry okay when you are angry your blood pressure goes high okay and uh, especially for the uh, high blood pressure patients it is suggested not to get angry not to take stress because stress is going to lead to a higher blood pressure when you are excited your blood pressure goes high because of the adrenaline rush adrenaline is a hormone that is released by your adrenaline glands and what it does it regulates your heart beat it increases your heart beat ultimately leading to the uh, blood pressure being risen then you have body postures okay body postures when i say uh, when you're standing or when you're walking or when you're doing any activity in particular your blood pressure is slightly higher but when you're relaxing it's compared to that it's comparatively low okay so when you're relaxing when you're sleeping your blood pressure is slightly lower than the normal sex okay this is dependent on whether you are male or female by birth. Uh, so females usually tend to have lower blood pressure when compared to men. Okay. And age, one another important thing guys, age is very important. Age is the factor because blood pressure increases as the age increases. Okay. Everybody uh, must have this question in their minds that, okay, what is the reason? We, we understand that the blood pressure is increasing with the age, but what is the reason? Nobody knows the answer. The research is still being conducted. However, the uh, information that we have currently is because the elasticity of these arteries are lost. So during the, uh, you know, with the age, your arteries also become old and the elasticity of the arteries is reduced. How it happens? Like, uh, elasticity once reduces what will happen it is not able to expand okay the arteries itself is not able to expand to regulate the pressure so the pressure is the pressure exerted on the walls are way higher when compared to young adults because young adults have uh, their arteries very uh, elastic so it expands and relaxes so that's how the age plays a very important role in increasing blood pressure however it can still be controlled because of a healthy diet and regular exercise because what will happen is your arteries are not going to grow old the elasticity is going to be maintained there are certain yog yogic uh, practices that you need to perform uh, that helps you to keep your heart and your vessels healthy so in this video we've learned enough about what is blood pressure and what are the normal factors and what are the blood what what does blood pressure in a normal healthy human being means now we'll in the coming video we'll learn about the complications of the blood pressure complications when i say what is high blood pressure what is low blood pressure what are the major causes of these and also how cholesterol plays a very important role in increasing your blood pressure all of it we're going to discuss in our next video so if you found even this video helpful and interesting please share it with your friends and family and let them know about blood pressure and few facts that you have learned today so thank you please do subscribe to my youtube channel biology made easy uh, it has been a wonderful time thank you so much for listening to me guys